Hi, my name is Quentin Austin, and today I'll be discussing polyol development from renewable resources. A brief overview of this PowerPoint presentation is uh, what is a polyol, the various types of polyols, why is it important, um, applications primarily focusing on polyurethane foams, um, the current research on renewable polyols, and then in closing the conclusion and the future prospective research of polyols. Um, it will di dissect the recent development of thermoset polyols from vegetable-based oils and the various applications used for these polyurethane foams and why a renewable resource outlet for these materials is beneficial. Uh, first, we must answer the question of what is a polyol? Um, polyols have a vast variety of use in the polymer industry. Uh, this variety varies widely on the intended application of polyurethanes. These organic compounds are used for their multifunctional hydroxyl groups when reacting with polyisocyanates. As you can see in figures one and two, these are the two distinctive types of polyols. Um, polyether po polyols and polyester polyols. Um, these two break down according to their end use as the molecular weight of the polymer increases, the flexibility increases, lower molecular weight provides more rigidity uh, applications. Uh, moving on, we have the different types of polyols. And, you know, as previously discussed, there are two distinctive types. There's polyester polyols and polyether polyols. Um, there are conventional polyester polyols that produce polyurethanes with much better resistances to solvents or abrasions, but are generally more price heavy. Then there are graft polyols that are molecularly dispersed and grafted to dis sustain higher molecular weights. Then a various selection of specialty polyols, which as the name suggests, are not commonly synthesized. <laughs> Lastly, there are natural oil polyols derived from vegetable oils. Um, this is what we'll be spending a lot of focus on in terms of discussions. So moving on. Polyurethane foams have found wide use and application in thermal insulation and packaging. With their high strength and weight bearing capacity provides promising commercial packaging foam materials. Most of these rigid packaging foams are developed from polypropylene oxide trials and MDI. However, these materials suffer from low oxidative stability and are hydrolysis sensitive. Um, aside from the shift towards cleaner and more environmentally friendly alternatives for producing polymers and meeting the demands of an ever-changing world economy, there are several benefits for using polyols derived from soybean oils. Soybean production in the United States has grown dramatically over the past decade, as well as paralleling, paralleling another soybean production growth in China. This presented several promising outlooks in the biodiesel industry as well as the plastics industry. Um, by replacing the propylene oxide trial based polyurethane foams with vegetable oil based foams, this could alleviate their water absorption issues and add value to already existing agricultural products. This, the difficulty with these renewed Renewable polyols is the uneven saturation of the double bonds and current ability to only produce semi-rigid foams. Moving on, we have applications of polyols. Now, as previously discussed on the slide prior, um, they found a lot of use in thermal insulation and packaging due to their high strength and weight bearing capacities. Um, but the primar primarily, it's their, uh, their focus on the the various types of polyurethane foams that can be produced. Now on to the next slide with current research of polyols. Um, as we mentioned prior, the, the difficulty with these renewable polyols is the uneven saturation of the double bonds. Um, this remains a high level of focus for researchers at the Kansas Polymer Research Center located in Pittsburgh, Kansas. Zoran Petrovich has spent much much of his time comparing the mechanical and insulating properties of soy-based foams versus the traditional PPO foams. Um, Petrovic's studies have shown that soy-based polyols currently do not have enough hydroxyl content required to produce a sufficient degree of cross-linking for a rigid foam product. 
by analyzing the OH number of the polyols and adding more water and a multifunctional cross-linker, these researchers were able to bring the viscosity of the soy polyols to a working range and prepare various types of polyurethane foams through an array of methods such as chemoenzymatic expedition, ozonolysis, and hydroformulation. And in conclusion, um, overall, I feel that the soybean polyols will become the future of the polyurethane foam industry by utilizing every aspect of a renewable agricultural product. We will be able to not only have a cost effective method of meeting the demands of customers, but also share an eco friendly approach to the incredible world of thermosets as well as thermoplastics. Um, based off the research articles showing that there are more than one way to synthesize these polyols provides an insight to the hidden potential of these products. And lastly, here are my works cited, and I hope you all enjoyed. Thank you.